Dolby Atmos, spatial audio, Apple Music after three ish months. What are my thoughts? Let's discuss. Discussed? <laughs> Let's discuss. <laughs> Three months after Apple introduced spatial audio and Dolby Atmos for Apple Music, I've had some time to live with the features of the new, and the new car smell has kind of had chance to wear off. So I've put together some thoughts, some solid thoughts about each feature. Now, Atmos and spatial audio, not the same thing, uh, just to sort of get any kind of confusion out of the way before we begin. What is Dolby Atmos and how is it different from spatial audio. Put simply, Dolby Atmos is a standard that's been around for a while and has quickly become a big deal in the home theater world. It consists of what would be a typical 5.1 or 7.1 surround sound system with the addition of at least two uh, height speakers that's, that point up toward the ceiling and bounce back down toward you. So it gives you the feeling of, of like directional audio from all over the place, as opposed to just sort of, you know, in a, in a, in one plane, the result is a much more spacious sounding audio experience. It works incredibly well for movies and other media that incorporates it. The best way to experience Atmos is of course, to have a dedicated separate system with speakers and, and all that kind of stuff that are all purpose built for that thing. But there are sound bars out there that also do Atmos. Some of them have height speakers. Some of them mimic it with the, with like digital signal processing. The Sonos Arc is the best that I've tried so far. And if you want to review the Sonos Arc, let me know down in the comments and I will be sure to review that. And, and also talk about how it works with Apple's uh, uh, spatial audio and Dolby Atmos because that might be one of the best ways to experience a non-headphone kind of Dolby Atmos thing going on. Apple Spatial Audio is an add-on to Dolby Atmos that uses gyroscopes and other positional awareness hardware to track the position of where your head is. And uh, then the sound moves or doesn't move as your head moves. It's it's kind of weird, but it's a little bit of an add-on to Dolby Atmos. So when watching a movie, if someone speaks off to the right and you turn your head that way, then it sounds like it's coming right at your face. Whereas if, you know, you were just didn't have the spatial audio on and somebody was talking over there and you turned your head, it would still be, everything would still be the same. It's difficult to visualize, but spatial audio is just that. When you turn your head, the audio reacts to how you turn your head. It can be really cool. Spatial audio can be really cool in visual mediums, but for audio, I gotta be honest, for audio, I found that it's a little bit of a mixed bag. If you have spatial audio turned on while listening to music, it has this weird effect of like, when, when the singer's voice is in your left ear or your right ear, it, it just is very weird feeling. The only time I could see wanting to use spatial audio with music is if I were watching, say, a concert film or something like that. But again, that's, that's going to be visual. And even then, it would have to be mixed really well to bring on the desired effect. So spatial audio, it, it just not really all that much of an important thing to me. And you can only experience spatial audio with Apple specific devices like the AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, and, and again, I think I forget which Beats headphones, but some Beats headphones. And that now brings me around to the Dolby Atmos and music. I've listened to quite a bit of music with it, both with headphones and also on the Sonos system that I have in my entertainment room. The best thing I can say is when it's done really well, the experience is incredibly cool. When it's not done well, it's like you're listening to music inside of a refrigerator box. Yes, the sound is kind of directional all over the place, but it's somewhat muffled and softer in the texture and just kind of not really as tight as you would want it to be, as tight as it is in the stereo field. In fact, I found there was a significant volume difference in a lot of songs between switching from Atmos to stereo. Stereo had a lot more presence. Stereo was just all overall louder while Atmos was much softer and not as loud. I found this to be the case with rock for the most part, but uh, listening to the brand new Atmos version of the 50th anniversary remix of George Harrison's All Things Must Pass uh, was truly kind of weird and underwhelming. I mean, that's, that's a very interesting recording the way that it is. And so it was just kind of not as good as I 
hoped it would be. Uh, the same can be said for a new mix of the Stone Temple Pilots' uh, Tiny Music Songs from the Vatican Gift Shop. Both of those recordings have a rawness to them in their own specific ways, and the immediacy of the stereo versions, the just sort of right up in your face kind of feeling that you get uh, was completely gone with the Atmos, leaving both sounding kind of neutered by comparison. They just weren't exciting to hear. That's not to say that there aren't some really good implementations of Dolby Atmos with music out there. Nora Jones' Come Away With Me, the entire album, is honestly transformed with this new Atmos mix that's going on. I have loved listening to that. When it comes to popular music, though, Dolby Atmos worked best, and I guess this makes a lot of sense, with newer music. The engineers of modern recordings have a lot more technology to work with when recording and then after, after the fact as well. And now they can also just mix for Dolby from the start. The mixes that get done from here on out will get better, just like digital mixes got better, digital masters got better. And even the older stuff that was never intended to be mixed in that way will sound better as Dolby becomes more of a thing. But therein lies the rub. Will Dolby Atmos become a standard like stereo or will it remain niche and fade away like quadraphonic sound or super audio CDs or, you know, any of the things that have come and gone since the, since the advent of stereo uh, about 50 plus years ago? Will an artist or producer working out of their bedroom be able to pump out a decent Atmos mix? I, I really don't know. As an engineer and artist myself, I can say that I, it would take me some time to figure out how to do it well. So at the end of the day, Atmos has a lot of promise, but the quality is very uneven at the moment. Spatial audio as an add-on to audio only content is really kind of pointless to me and restricted solely to those specific Apple devices. I don't think there's much of a chance of that taking off and being something that people demand. Regardless, there's a long way to go before we see the new meta in audio being Atmos. A lot has to change in the industry and consumers have to buy into it and Maybe it will. I mean, stereo caught on when it was introduced as a competitor to mono all those years ago, but lots of formats have come and gone since then. What do you think? Have you tried spatial audio, Dolby Atmos, blah, 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 in whatever form? Uh, is it the next big thing or a blip on the audio radar? Let me know down in the comments and we will have a boisterous discussion. Otherwise, until the next time, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech. Tech's so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out. Did you like that video you just watched? I hope that you did. I really do. If you did like it, then there are some videos popping up on the screen over here that you could go watch YouTube, or I think they might be something that you would be into if you've just watched this video. If you want to follow me on Twitter, the Jason T. Lewis is where you go or look for Painfully Honest Tech on any of your social medias out there. I hope to see you out there in the social media sphere.